Good morning and thank you for joining us on News 12 Brooklyn. Today is Tuesday, June 28th. I'm Linnea Batiste. We'll bring you our top stories in a moment, but first News 12 Brooklyn reporter Gianna Jalosi has a traffic and transit report as you head off this morning. Gianna. All right, Katie, thank you for that. And 12 on crime, police are asking for your help in finding a man accused of exposing himself on the train. Here is a photo of the suspect. Police say he exposed himself Saturday night to a 24 year old woman sitting across from him on the end train. The victim got out of the Stillwell Avenue stop where she notified the authorities. And police are also asking for your help in finding this man. He's accused of holding up a Metro PCS on Fulton Street back on June 18th. Police say he got away with some cash as well as a female employee's chain. He's about 35 years old, 5 feet 10 inches with long black hair. Anyone with information is asked to call Crime Stoppers at 1-800-577-TIPS. I'm Linnea Batista. You're watching News 12 Brooklyn. More hyperlocal headlines and weather on the way. Stick with us. In other news, changes may soon come to families of inmates who die in New York prisons. Lawmakers have voted on a new measure that would require corrections officials to provide death certificates and details on the death and cause of death to the family members. It now heads to Governor Cuomo. If approved, the new bill will go into effect in four months. And the latest on the race for the White House, Massachusetts Senator Elizabeth Warren delivering an impassioned endorsement of Hillary Clinton during a campaign event in Cincinnati. Warren and Clinton took to the stage together for the first time this political season. This as Warren reportedly remains on a short list of Clinton's possible vice president picks. During her speech, the senator took on Donald Trump, calling him a, quote, small, insecure money grubber. As Mike's been telling us, it's going to be a sunny morning out there, which is perfect because today is National Sunglasses Day, and they're not just for fashion. They can also protect your eyes from harmful UV light, so throw on your favorite pair of shades before you head out today. And time now for our weather meteorologist, Mike Favetta. I already have on my shades, mm, Mike. We're ready. We're prepared. Yeah, we're pretty cool. What's right? going on? I'm, the sun is beautiful. <laughs> it, Perfect for now. It, it does. Doesn't it look amazing <laughs> yeah. outside? Bright, beautiful sun to start off your day. I'm going to be totally sick. That. <laughs> Finding Dory easily outswam the competition, landing in first place for the second weekend with $73.2 million. That number gives Dory the honors of best second weekend for an animated movie and eighth highest second weekend for any film. Shouldn't we be nervous? Um, uh, yeah. And second place, Independence Day Resurgence. Open to $41.6 million, nearly $14 million less than box office analysts had predicted, and far below the $50.2 million the original movie opened to in 1996. And Central Intelligence dropped one spot to finish third with $18.4 million in its second weekend in theaters. And wrapping up the Pride Weekend, the Empire State Building was lit up for the occasion. The HM Building also showing support for the LGBTQ community. A fireworks display was shot off over the Hudson River last night to cap off the celebrations. I'm Linnea Batiste and this is News of the Bronx. More hyper-local headlines coming straight your way. Plus, Gianna Delosi will have a live look at the latest on the roads and rails. And Mike Favetta is here with another look at our weather on the twos. But before we go, let's take a look at our question of the day. Are you satisfied with the conditions of NYCHA public housing? You can weigh in at news12.com or channel 612 on Optimum TV. As Carmen Santiago says, the rat infestation in her apartment went way too far. She says her grandson was bitten by a rat and now she needs to move. This is a look at the apartment building along the Cross Bronx Expressway near Haviland Avenue in Parkchester. I saw a dead rat as soon as I walked in and holes where rats come in and out of the rooms. Santiago says on Saturday her 21 month old grandson was sleeping in the bed when she woke up to him covered in blood. She then noticed a big rat and saw that he had been bitten on the finger. She took him to the hospital where he was treated and is now doing fine, but she's complained to the landlord saying he's done nothing to help. So she reached out to News 12. Santiago says she now needs a new place to live. The bite mark, a really bad mark. They didn't get stitches because it was on the finger, but it was horrifying, something I wouldn't wish on nobody. I'm just seeking help to see if somebody watches this and, you know, sympathizes with me and gives me an apartment. I'm 
Santiago says that she reached out to the health department and they confirmed that she has a rat infestation, even giving her traps to help out. I've reached out to the landlord and I'm still waiting to hear back with a response. In Park Chester, Linnea Batiste, News 12, The Bronx. An issue that's been affecting tenants all along 169th Street for weeks. People in the neighborhood telling me that rent checks and bills never make it to their destination and now they're demanding answers. This is the only mailbox on this corner at 169th in the Grand Concourse and is used by people throughout the neighborhood. One woman says she's missing two money orders and her cable bill was never delivered to her provider. And although she hasn't seen anyone stealing mail, she says she thinks she knows how it's going missing. This is what I'm, I'm speculating how they do it. All right, the glue, the glue is, the rag glue is located right here as you can feel it. And I'm on a fixed income, so this shouldn't, you know, it's really affecting me. And I checked the mailbox for myself, and there is a very sticky substance on the inside, light glue, making it very difficult for letters to drop all the way in. Melina says her husband is missing his rent check, and since I've been out here, another man came up to me and said he's missing his rent check, too. Thankfully, Melina kept the receipts to her money order, so she will be filing claims. Reporting on the Grand Concourse, Linnea Batiste, News 12, The Bronx. Sprinkles, chocolate syrup, and that creamy goodness we all love. Mr. Softy is a New York City favorite. I do this for almost 30 years. But it's the people behind the delicious soft serve that keeps this company running. Thank you, sir. The Mr. Softy garage is located right here in the Bronx, and every day vendors like Bronxite Heli Vasquez stock up on their product and head out all over the city to serve eager customers. That was every day in the, in the park. Some of those is waiting for me to come up over there and get this ice cream. However, this local love is now known all over the world thanks to one pretty famous superhero. The most requested cone right now are Captain America cones. Mr. Softy is featured in the new Captain America movie, and Mr. Vasquez says he's even received some favors because of it. What about Captain America? Have you had any fans come up to you? Yes, uh, yes, it is. Uh, it's actually really one of those guys. He gave me a ticket for the for the movie. Vasquez says this is a family business for him. Even his wife has her own truck. With nearly 80 vendors scattered across the city, he says you can never go wrong with Mr. Softy. So do you think this is the best ice cream around? And the world. Not in New York City. And the world. On Southern Boulevard, Linnea Batiste, News 12, The Bronx.